let's de-stress. We'll do this, you know, this, this helps. Many, in fact, many scientists have found this correct. Uh, many people, many doctors also recommend you should meditate. I've also tried that. It helps you relax. You should have controlled breathing process. We actually don't have controlled breathing process and that is very essential for a good health and a fit body. Okay, so we, we often try meditating and what is recommended to you when you are meditating is that you have to follow your breath. So try it. Let, let's try it. Okay, quick. Close your eyes. Okay, close your eyes. Now breathe in. Don't think about anything else. Just listen to me and follow my instructions. Breathe in. Try to follow the path that you just studied. You just studied. Breathe in and you try to see, try to feel that oxygen, the air, oxygen is going inside your lungs, getting diffused. Okay? And then it's getting utilized by your body. And when you breathe out, come on, breathe out. That means just try to see the reverse path that has been taken by carbon dioxide. Fine? Coming from inside to outside it, to the nostrils. Feel it? Okay. So, you know, this, this may seem actually, when you start it, if you have not ever, if you haven't tried it ever, so try it out. At the start, you know, I also felt, oh no, what, what boring process is this? Rather, I should go out and play. But playing is, of course, good for your health. But this is a different way of controlling yourself, controlling your mind, controlling your breathing process and de-stressing. You know, you, the, you relief, you get a lot of relief. Fine, your tensions go away, your body like calms down. Try this out. Fine, okay. So this process, well, while you are breathing in, breathing out, involves some cool physics. I'll talk about it. Let me show it to you. Okay, I had a surprise for you, <laughs> and this is the time to talk about the surprise. I'll show it to you first. Let me do the setup as always, right? Are you excited? Experiment. How many of you are excited? Raise your hand quickly. Then only I'll do. If you're not excited, then okay, let's let's not do. Excited? I am at least very excited to show you all these things, right? Whatever I know, I want to give it to you. Let me set this up. In the meantime, bring back all your excitements because experiment is coming up already. So computer is ready now. So we'll do a quick activity. Very quick activity so that we understand this process of breathing. In fact, you can do this at your home. Have you ever seen this apparatus? Yes. Have you ever seen this apparatus? Okay. Concentrate. Slowly. First, let us try to understand the apparatus over here. This is an apparatus which almost resembles the breathing structures that we have in our body. You know, this part, this portion that you're seeing, this portion, yeah, inside, this, it's a, it's a, it's a rubber, it's made up of rubber, but this material, I can extend it, okay, I can stretch it. So, you see, it's a dome-shaped structure. What was the structure we studied about? Dome-shaped? Come on, tell me all of you. Dome-shaped structure was the, come on, diaphragm. Yes. So, this is, can you see, it's a dome-shaped structure. I think, yes, you can see it. Correct? See, dome shaped structure, the diaphragm. Now, these two, the red balloons that you're seeing inside this jar, glass jar, yes, I, I'm sure you can see it. Okay, very good. Now, these balloons are the lungs. They represent our lungs. Clear? Yes? Do you see the branching? Yes, we have seen this right now. And let's imagine this is the nostrils, the outermost part. Let's breathe. Let's breathe through this apparatus. Okay. I will try to breathe through this apparatus and you'll breathe yourself. Let's try to relate these two. All of you, ready? Come on, let's see the magic. Now, we had studied that the diaphragm becomes flattened. Let's see what happens. If I am pulling this slowly, I'm doing very slowly. See. Oh my God, do you see the balloons getting inflated? Yeah, it's increasing size. That means air is going inside. Now let me breathe out. Come on, all of you breathe out. See what's happening. Oh, 
see. In fact, I don't know if you can hear the sound. I can actually hear the sound like when we breathe out. I can hear it. I can hear this sound going outside. Once more, let's do. Breathe in. Come on, all of you. Breathe in. See. Breathe in. Yes, air going inside. I can hear it again. Breathe out, all of you. Come on. Yes, let's breathe out. Oh, wonderful, right? This is actually something which is happening inside our body also. Fine? Well, let me show it to you. I'll bring this back again and we'll try to relate it properly. Clear all of you? Understood? Let's get this setup ready. Okay. So, all set. Now, whatever you observed here, whatever you observed here, why was this happening? Why was this happening? First, let, let's see if anyone can answer this. Why were the balloons, or rather, how air was getting, in, getting inside? Of course, the balloons were getting were bigger, growing bigger, because air was getting inside. Air was pushing the balloons, right? So it's getting bigger because air is accumulating inside these balloons. Correct? But how was this happening? Because I'm not blowing here. I'm not blowing here. What I'm doing is, I am just pulling this one. See, it's air is going inside. I'm when I'm pushing this one, it is going outside. See, but there is no connection between these two. How is this happening? How is this happening? Can any one of you recall something that you have studied? Mostly in chemistry, I think you have studied in physics also. There's some law called the Boyle's law. There is a relation between the pressure and volume. All of you, how many of you remember this? Raise your hand. Yes, I think you have studied this in your chemistry class. Boyle's law. Recall, you have studied this. And according to Boyle's law, if the temperature is constant, please remember what I'm telling is temperature is constant. Okay? When the temperature is constant, the pressure of the gas is inversely proportional. Let me repeat. When the temperature is constant, the pressure of gas, of the gas, is inversely proportional to its volume see here when increase in pressure 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 increasing right see the volume is decreasing of course this is the volume see the area volume is basically how much space is occupied by the molecules how much space will be occupied by the molecules that's a volume and pressure you see when i'm increasing the wait 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 let's increase come on Increase. Increase in pressure. See the volume of the gas. The volume is getting reduced. When the pressure is decreasing, the volume is getting increased. So it's inversely proportional. Fine. So what if I, I can say if in the in a system, if the pressure is high, then the volume will be low. If the pressure is low, then the volume will be high, inversely proportional. Or in other words, you can say, if the volume is high, if the volume is large, that means the pressure will be low. If the volume is small, lesser, then the pressure will be higher. This is the relation, inversely proportional. Got it? So, Boyle's law. Now, <laughs> you know why I am talking about this? See the relation. See the relation. The same relation or the same logic applies in our apparatus. Same logic, okay? So that means, that means, let me demonstrate right now. What we studied right now, relation between volume and pressure. Right now, this is the condition. Now think about the volume of inside this jar. This is sealed. Only way through which air can get inside is through this, through this pipe, if you can see it properly, through this pipe, right? So, if this is the case, dome shaped, see the volume. The volume is this. Correct? Now, if this is the case, volume has increased or not? Yes or no? Of course, volume has increased. Volume has definitely increased. Because, see, now I have the whole cylinder as well as this part, which is occupied by this rubber. Okay? It's also actually made up of balloon. We, have, we actually had cut a balloon and then fixed it here. You can also do this. Very simple apparatus. See, here the volume has increased. Now, what will be the relation? Let's figure this out once more. Come on. 
I'm enjoying this, you know. Well, so when this is the condition, volume is low, volume is less, correct? That means pressure will be high, definitely. Yes or no, everyone? If the volume is low right now, if yes, the volume is low right now, then the pressure inside this system, in this jar, will be high. When the volume is high, then the pressure will be low. Now, think about it. How is air getting inside? Can you relate? Can any one of you relate? Simple process. We have already studied it every time. Like in physics, chemistry, bio, we have studied it. Molecules move from higher concentration to lower concentration. High pressure to low pressure zone. And this is the reason why we feel winds, storms. Why does this happen? Remember, we have studied this in geography. Storms, why does this happen? It's nothing but the pressure difference. 